In this video, we're going to look at some tips for factoring a sum or difference of cubes, and these tips should help you remember the formulas that you need when you're trying to factor a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. So let's look at our first problem. We want to factor x cubed plus 125. So once you determine that these are each perfect cubes, then you can say, okay, I have a sum of cubes. So here's what I mean by determining that they're perfect cubes. You have to see if each of these terms was the result of something being cubed. So for instance, to get x cubed, you took the variable x and cubed it. Well, to get 125, you took the number 5 and cubed it. And they are separated by a plus. So there we have a sum of cubes because these are two perfect cubes. So your first term that was cubed, that's your a. And the second term that was cubed, that's your b. That's the a and the b from the formula. So let's write out the formula. So once I determine that I do in fact have a sum of cubes, once I determine I have a sum of cubes, I am ready to use the formula. So for a sum of cubes, the formula is your a plus b, and then times your a minus ab plus b squared. All right, now that's what you would have to remember, but these tips over here are hopefully going to help you remember that formula. So the first tip is to memorize the word SOAP. The word SOAP stands for same, opposite, always, positive. So SOAP, same, opposite, always, positive. That's going to help you remember where the pluses and the minuses go in the formula. The next thing that's going to help you down here is square, multiply, square. So square, multiply, square. That tells you what you do with the a and the b values in the formula. All right, so let's go ahead and write our final answer. So we had x cubed plus 125. So you have to remember that you have a binomial and a trinomial. And first, let's fill in the signs. So that's where the SOAP comes from. So the first sign is going to be the same. The next sign is going to be opposite. But the last sign is always positive. So the same. If we started with a sum in our original problem, the first sign is going to be a plus, plus and a plus. That means the next sign is opposite. So if the first sign is a plus, the next sign is a minus. But the always positive means you always end with a positive, no matter if you have a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. All right, now let's look at this square multiply square. Okay, square multiply square. So let's go to the binomial. You have to remember that the first two terms are just your a and your b. So our a was x and our b was 5. So we have an x plus 5. Now, square means you take your a value and you square it. Multiply means you take your a and your b and you multiply them. So our a was x, our b was 5. Multiply them together, you get 5x. And then the last square means you take the b value and you square it. So we had a 5, and that's going to get squared. So when we simplify this, we're going to get our final answer, which is going to be x plus 5 times x squared minus 5x, and then plus 25. So that is how you factor the sum of cubes x cubed plus 125. All right, let's look at the next one. Now we have a minus. But the 24 and the 81, those aren't perfect cubes. So we got to look at this a little bit further. Even though we're learning all these new factor patterns, don't forget your basics. And when I mean your basics, I mean don't forget to always scan your problem for a GCF. 24 and 81 share a GCF of 3. So if I divide out the 3, that leaves me with 8x cubed minus 27. Aha! 8 is a perfect cube and 27 is a perfect cube. So if I have 8x cubed, it means that I had a 2x being cubed. And if I have 27, it means I had a 3 
being cubed. All right, so let's write out our formula. Once I determine that I have a difference of cubes, so once I determine it's a cubed minus b cubed, I am going to use the formula, which is a minus b and then a squared plus a b plus b squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in our numbers here. Now, we had a 3 out front, so don't forget that. So we have the 3, then we have the binomial, then we have the trinomial. So let's do same, opposite, always positive. So if we started with a minus sign, our first sign is going to be the same. So we're going to have a minus there. That means the next sign is going to be opposite, so that's going to be a plus. And the last sign is also going to be a plus because we end with always positive. So we determined our a was 2x, so that's going to go right here, and our b was 3, so 2x minus 3. Then we do square multiply square. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that 2x and we're going to square it. Then we're going to multiply. So we're going to multiply the 2x and the 3. So that's the a and the b, the 2x and the 3. And then we're going to take whatever the b was and we're going to square that. So all we have to do now is clean this up a little bit and we will have our final answer. So 3 times 2x minus 3. Now when we do the 2x and we square that term, that gives us 4x squared. And then 2x times 3 gives us plus 6x and then plus the 3 squared, which gives us 9. And again, don't forget that GCF of 3 is still out front. So there you have it, 3 times 2x minus 3 times 4x squared plus 6x plus 9. So if you can remember SOAP and square multiply square, you should be able to remember how to factor a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes.